You know, in ancient thought, teleos was all about a study of the end or the purpose of a thing. And it began way back in Aristotle's time and it moved up through the, the ages and it never lost its importance because as humans we often find ourselves asking the question, what is the purpose of all this? What, what is the end goal of all this? Uh, it, to what end will all these means take us? And it's, a, it's an ancient question. And I think it's an important question for us to think about, but it's not the only question we should be thinking about. You see, in, in those times, there was an understanding that there was something called destiny. And a lot of people were intrigued by it. A lot of people were scared by it. Uh, a lot of people were apathetic towards it. It didn't seem to matter where you were on the spectrum. There was an understanding that it was somehow out there and had some effect on what we were doing. Um, but it became a matter of, okay, was it something that was affecting us or was it something that was driving us towards the achievement of something? And along with that, there was the idea that this destiny piece was wrapped up in a fog uh, that you couldn't decipher, that you weren't able to understand almost until you were on top of it. And even then, when you began to peel back the layers and find yourself understanding what the purpose is, it may not have made sense to some people because they lost context with what they had had to go through to get to that end purpose, to get to that end situation where they began figuring out why this was happening. Why is this happening to us? Why is this happening to me? And, and what's the end result of all of this? And I can't help but think that a lot of us are in the same boat even right now. In the last two or three weeks, we've been asking ourselves the question, why is this happening? How, how could this happen so quickly, so fast? And I know that a lot of us have been scrambling over the last couple weeks to just, just to try to keep our nose above the waterline. And it seems like it's, it's all we can do to tread water, to make sure that we're not sinking below the waves of this storm that we're in. And we barely have time to even think for ourselves let alone think of these deeper, more penetrating questions of what's the end goal, what's the purpose, where are we going with all of this? It, we may not have the time to think that, but we have to create the time to think that. And, that, and therein lies the problem, doesn't it? Because we're working at such a frantic pace right now that we're not even giving ourselves time to relax, to rest, uh, every spare moment, if it's not sleeping, it's spent preparing, it's spent deliberating, it's spent answering email, it's spent arguing, it's, it's spent dealing with the emotional drain and the cognitive overload that we're all experiencing at this time. How in the world are we ever supposed to get the time to sit down and think our way through this? And yet here we are, aren't we? We're three weeks in and for some of us it may not seem like anything has changed. Everything is still moving at a rapid pace. Some of us are beginning to find our stride and some of us have pivoted quite well or, or fair enough. And we're in a space now where we can start asking longer term questions and longer term meaning, you know, more than a couple weeks, three months, six months, what does even longer term mean anymore? And I'm still hearing words like triage used in educational circles, which gives the indication to me that we're still in this crisis response mode. 
but we can't operate there forever. We can't stay there forever. If we haven't already, we're going to burn out. So we have to begin thinking of, of ways to address the question of what's the end purpose? What's the end goal? And I'm in the same boat as a lot of people. I teach, I work at an institution that supports other people in the educational circles. And this, this pivoting has affected me just like others. And, and, it's, and it's weighing on my conscience a lot that I haven't given the time to think through a lot of these questions, quite frankly, as much as I want to. And I have to come to a point where I, I need to create some space to begin doing that. And I guess this is what this episode is all about, is giving space to think about the telos of what we're doing. But I think we're good at adapting to our surroundings, aren't we? We're really good at forcing ourselves to change given those changes in the environment around us. And, and, and I know that we often get caught up in the whirlwind of that change and we find ourselves having to put out a ton of effort and we find ourselves having to put out a ton of, ton of extra work and we may even lose sleep. We may uh, become even more anxious, but eventually we do adapt. And you know, the more I think about it, the more often I, I'm reminded that the process that we're going through with this change is really not a lot different than how people work themselves through grief. There's a bit of anger uh, at the beginning and we can't believe that we're caught in this mess and we can't believe that we're, we're laid slave to these massive changes that happen overnight. Uh, and then we move from anger to depression where it's, it's almost like we're, we're helpless and we have no ability to, to create any kind of stability, let alone manage what's going on in our lives or in the lives of our students or in the lives of our families. And then from depression, we move into this negotiation piece where we think we can begin negotiating with the circumstances around us. We can begin negotiating to ourselves and start saying things like, well, you know what, it's, it's really not that bad. It's, it's, uh, it's going to get better soon. We'll find ourselves out of, this, uh, out of this peak pretty quick and things will be back to normal in a couple weeks. But we're all often thinking, what is normal now? What will be the new normal? And then eventually we find ourselves at acceptance where we're at a position where we've accepted the situation as it is and we're going to move forward and we're going to make these changes and we just put our heads down and we start plowing forward and and those are all fine stages and those are needed and I think that's what we're going through but I often wonder through this time if there isn't another stage after the acceptance is is there an is there room enough in all of this for us to consider another stage one that I want to call uh, making plans, looking ahead, dealing with the telos of the trajectory of which we're on. And I think it's an important part of this stage that we're going through is figuring out to what end does this all go? To, to where do we want it to com be completed? I know some just want to go back to the way it was before. I know that there are some on the other spectrum that want to see the whole system completely upheaved and changed. I'm not sure either one of those is realistic, but I know that somewhere in between those two, we're going to land. And so I wonder if there's space enough for us to begin thinking about where we're going to be. What end is this going to become? And how much of a role do we want to play in that end? I guess what I'm asking myself is, where's the crossroads in all of this? I, do I want to make it a, a difference for the future? Or do I just want to make a difference for now? So without minimizing or downplaying what we're in right now, I wanted to offer some thoughts that I've been thinking um, in regards to taking advantage of the, of the time and, and trying to figure out the telos of all this stuff that we're going through. What is the end goal? What is the purpose? What is the aim of what we're doing here? Uh, for some of us, it may just be to survive. Just survive for the next week, survive the next month. Let's just make it to summer, let's just make it to fall, and then everything will turn back to normal. But I don't think everything's going to return back to normal. And I'm often um, finding myself caught in the conversation of, with other colleagues about, you know, what are my students doing? This is just an opportunity for them to cheat and to take more advantage of the system. And we need to lock down even more tighter control on our students to make sure that they're not ripping the system off and that they're not degrading the academic integrity of what we're doing. Is this the time that we should be clamping down the clamps of academic integrity? Or is it a time for us to think of maybe a new purpose of what we do, a new aim, a new goal, a new end for what we do? 
So I want to offer four thoughts in regards to this topic called telos. And, and the first one is, is that, you know what, it, it's okay to say that you're not okay. I think one of the first things that we do, especially in education, is we begin looking at other people and their needs first and placing them above us. And, and that's, that's acceptable. That's normal to what we do. I mean, part of the reason why I'm in this profession is because I want to help people grow and I want to see them succeed. I want to see them become something that they didn't think they could be before. And in a crisis situation like this, I'm even more attuned to that where I want to see them make it through this time. But sometimes we do that to the neglect of ourselves, don't we? Sometimes we do that to the neglect of what we need. And we put our needs on hold and we put our our time for ourselves on hold as we serve others, as we begin to ramp up the stewardship of what we've been given. But I often say to myself and to other colleagues that I work with that if we're not taking the time to fill our own well, how can we fill others? How can we nourish others if our well is dry? We can't. You're not any less human. You're not any less of an educator. You're not any less of a, of a tradesperson or you're not any less of a human being by saying, you know what, right now, I'm not okay. And so the second thing I wanna offer to you and, and think my way through is, we need to take stock of what we really have. You know, there's this, there's this mindset uh, that we need to go and start hoarding all our groceries because we don't know what the supply chain is going to look like. So we need to start stocking up on flour and potatoes and canned goods and, you know, wipes and toilet paper and all these things. But have we taken stock of what we really have? Or are we just overbuying and, and overindulging and, and, in a sense, hoarding? And so I wonder if there's, if there's space. I think there's space for us to begin taking stock of what we have. Because when we start taking talk of stock of what we have, it starts calming us down. It calms me down. It begins to remind me that I'm not as bad off as I thought. There's a lot of stuff here. And I don't need to panic and, and go into crisis mode over everything. And so the third thing that I wanted to mention is this idea of practicing gratitude for what you have. Once you've taken stock for it, and you know what you have, start practicing some gratitude for what you have. Because you know what? There's always people that, that don't have as much as we do. There's always somebody who has it worse than us. And I think that that's really important to remember because it kind of puts things in perspective. Every, every day at seven o'clock, I hear the horns go off for our care workers. And I think to myself, you know, I don't have it half as bad as they do. I don't have to go into a, a war zone uh, and, and worry about whether I'm going to contract something or bring it home to my loved ones and have them exposed to it. I don't, I don't have to face that. And for that, I'm, I'm extremely thankful. Not, that, not only that I, that I don't have to do it, but I'm very thankful that they do it and they do it courageously. Taking stock of what we have will help us to feel thankful for what we have. And the last thing I wanted to offer to you is, you know, we begin, start, we begin by starting to take small steps forward. And I've, I've learned in sports and I've learned in life that if I can just keep my feet moving, it's a lot easier to change direction. It's a lot easier to pivot. But once I've stopped moving, once my feet have stopped moving, it's game over, I'm, I'm done. And, and I think that can be applicable even to this situation where you know, we've, we've said it's okay that we're not okay. And we begin to take stock of what we have and we begin to feel thankful for what we have. We start practicing some gratitude and then we start moving forward step by step, little step by little step. Not taking big steps, not taking big chunks of time and planning them out till next year or five years from now, but just asking ourselves, what can I do today? What can I do this week? What can I do for next week? How can I stay calm and how can I take care of myself and other people that are in my stewardship? And it's those tiny steps that we start taking that starts making a big difference in the end or the purpose of where we're going with all of this. It makes a difference to the telos of this moment. So to what end are you seeking? To what purpose are you looking for in all of this? Are we in far enough to stop thinking that our students are always cheating or that they're gonna take this opportunity to rip off the system? Are we in far enough to begin looking at what we're doing objectively and begin asking ourselves some, some pretty serious questions about what we're doing and how we're gonna do it. Because I think now is the time to create some real change in the system. Even if it's just something that you do in your own practice, now is the time to start thinking through some of these questions. To what end will this take us? To what end will this take you? 
And I guess ultimately it leads me to the question of what purpose do you want to give yourself to? Mm -hmm.